Hello and welcome to the inside of a Jaguar E-Pace. What is an E-Pace? Well, it's not electrically powered like most people's E's. It's just smaller than an F-Pace, F-Pace, E-Pace. Makes perfect sense. Think of it as a rival to the BMW X1, Audi Q3, one of the Mercedes GL, something or others, A, probably. A new small crossover, of which there are lots, aren't there? SUV crossover, 4x4, call them what you will. This is four-wheel drive, this car, and it shares its platform. It's about 4.4, 4.5 metres long. It shares its platform with the Land Rover Discovery Sport, or Range Rover Evoque, but it's not built in the same place because the Halewood plant in Liverpool that is building Evoque and Disco Sport is already full. So it's built, well, some of them are going to be built in China. This one, I think, is built in Austria at the Magnus Steyr plant. So, a new JLR product. Well, what's it got under the skin? Well, it's got a transverse front-mounted engine driving through. In this case, you can have a six-speed uh, manual. This has got a nine-speed ZF transmission. It's a new-ish transmission built specifically for transverse applications, predominantly front-wheel drive applications, because that's the most significant thing about the new E-Pace from our point of view. I mean, you know, some people will go for the looks and blah, blah, blah. What you and I want to know is it any good to drive because it's a front-wheel drive platform, the first front-wheel drive Jaguar since the X-Type. Jaguar, they are often wheel out a D-Type, E-Types everywhere. You don't see them X-Types, you don't see heritage fleet X-Types very often, do you? Funny. Anyway, they're all going to be powered, E-Paces, not X-Types, by the Ingenium range of Jaguar's engines. So they're diesel, petrol, modular, four-cylinder things. I think they will share a share quite a lot of components, share a block. This one is the petrol with 300 metric horsepower, which is, what, 296 brake. So let's pop it down, manual overrides on the, on the thing. How does it sound? Relatively quiet. In fact, when I'm tootling along, doing 60 miles an hour here, which is the limit on this road, can't hear the engine at all. Do get a reasonable bit of wind noise and a bit of road noise normal for the class I think actually. Refinement levels are pretty good. Right, what about the rest of it inside? Well, you know you get in an Audi, it feels like an Audi. You get in a BMW, it feels like a BMW. You get in this Jaguar and it does, to its credit, feel like a Jaguar. Now from a sort of construction point of view, from a sort of prod things point of view and infotainment point of view, that doesn't necessarily follow that it's the best in the class because you know, Audis, BMWs, they all have that really Germanic, solid-feeling plastics, rubberized plastics that you don't quite get to the same extent in here. But it is pretty nicely designed. It's got a swooping dashboard this side, which separates driver and passenger quite nicely. That side looks like, I don't know, some kind of water feature would pour over it. But what it does mean is it gives this sort of driver-focused cabin. You get that in an F-Type, the sports car, actually. I quite, and I quite like that. A little bit of glare off some of the aluminium in here. Some manufacturers don't do that. The Range Rover Velar was the same. You get the sort of sun down on it and it melts back up straight in your face. But by and large, it is a pleasing enough interior. There's enough space in the back. Loads of storage cubbies, actually. Jaguar makes a big thing of this. Big door pockets, big bin in here. But importantly, what's it like to drive? Well, this one, because it's a fairly high range topping one, is four-wheel drive, but it gets the blend of ride and handling not too bad. If you come at it expecting Jaguar Saloon dynamics, you're not going to find them. Okay, it steers, it steers quite nicely to be fair, but when you sort of lean on it in a corner, it leans onto the front and outside tyre a bit, and then as you sort of lift it, it just sort of gets a bit of diagonal pitch going on. It's pretty good for a car of this type, but a saloon car, a lower car, will always be a dynamically superior thing. The ride quality is okay. Around town it's a bit brittle because this one is on 20s. 20s look big on a car like this. It's a small car. And even if you style it swiftly and aggressively, I always think a sort of a compact, tall SUV, trying to look angry, always just never looks really aggressive, does it? Sort of looks like an angry jelly baby or something, and they never look really... Arr. So against the other cars in its class, well, it is a Jaguar take on the small SUV thing. And that's fine, you know, actually. If you come to this car expecting Jaguarish dynamics, you won't find them. But you wouldn't buy an SUV if that's what you wanted in the first place. If you want a car that looks like a Jaguar, feels pretty much like a Jaguar, certainly is like a Jaguar inside, 
It's probably the best looking car in the class, isn't it? It's nice enough inside, it's nice enough to drive. It's fine. They'll sell bloody loads of them, won't they?